Hi, I'm Mr. Philpot, teacher of English. I'm here today for this short lesson on how to write a five paragraph essay about literature. <clears throat> Today's lesson takes place in the kitchen because this is an essay that we have to cook up. So off with the jacket and on with the apron. It's time to get to work. For a well-balanced meal, you need three types of foods, meats, potatoes, and vegetables. For this meal too, we also need three types of sentences. You need your points. You need to make clear, bold statements. You need illustrations or quotes to back up your arguments. And you need to explain to the reader what you mean. And you'll have to include some analysis and explanation. I call this method the PI method. P for point, I for illustration, E for explanation, the pie method. And to illustrate this point, I've baked a pie. So we've established we have three types of ingredients, point, explanation, and illustration. Now it's time to put those ingredients into a recipe. The recipe for a five paragraph essay looks like this. We start with the introduction. We'll have three body paragraphs. Body paragraph two, a body paragraph three, and a conclusion, finally. That's the rough overview of our five paragraph essay. The most important sentence is found at the end of the introduction paragraph, right here. This point is also known as a thesis statement. I had to sit long and hard and think about a good thesis statement after reading my books, and I came to this point. <coughs> Some people may just be evil by nature, but we have the ability to change under the right circumstances. This is going to be the driving sentence behind my whole essay. My first body paragraph, my second body paragraph, and third are going to have to support this thesis statement. It consists of three parts, making it easy for me to work with three body paragraphs. Each body paragraph begins with a topic sentence that refers to this thesis statement. So we have topic sentence one, two, and three. Topic sentence one is going to relate to the first part of my thesis statement. Some people are evil by nature. Here we see a similar sentence. Some people are inherently immoral. Topic sentence two is going to refer to the second part, but we have the ability to change. And here we see a similar sentence. We ultimately turn to good. Topic sentence three refers to the last part of the thesis statement. Under the right circumstances, criminals must encounter the right situation. These three topic sentences are going to guide my whole uh, essay. Now, it's time to look for illustrations that support these arguments. We'll come to the introduction and the conclusion later. Don't worry about that for now. They're part of the finishing touches. Illustrations in the body paragraph consist mainly of quotes. These are the driving force behind the essay. So what we'll need now is we'll have to go quote hunting. Finding sentences, lines from the books that support the main arguments. What kind of quotes could I find from Pulp Fiction and A Clockwork Orange to support this statement that some people are inherently immoral or evil? In Pulp Fiction, I can refer to the fact that Jules kills Brett. That's not nice. In A Clockwork Orange, I can refer to how Alex raped a woman. In the next body paragraph, I'll find similar quotes to support this statement. We ultimately turn to good. Vincent and Alex both experience a kind of epiphany, and they turn to good. Vincent gives up crime. Alex wants a wife and a baby. In the third body paragraph, we're going to have to find some quotes that support this statement that criminals must encounter the right situation. Jules has a near-death experience. Alex is a, meets an old friend who's married and he finds a picture of a baby. These are the th situations that make them turn to good. For the last step, we're going to have to cook all of this up and brew it into an essay. We'll do that here by comparing, contrasting, and analyzing. Alex and Jules enjoy crime. That's something we can establish. That supports this 
topic sentence. In the second paragraph, we need to support the idea that they ultimately turn to good. And we'll compare their magical experiences where they see the errors of their ways. In the third paragraph, we have to look at those situations a little more closely. Only our protagonists learn from these random experiences. Here we have established good arguments that back up our topic sentence that in turn support the thesis statement. For the finishing touches, it's time to write the introduction and the conclusion. Strangely enough, they come last. To kick off your paper with the right words, you're going to have to have an attention grabber. Something that grabs your audience's attention and pulls them in. Recently I opened the newspaper and I read about a very evil man, Bernard Madoff, a uh, Wall Street guru who ripped a lot of people off for about 50 billion dollars. This in my book is a pretty serious crime. I'm going to have to explain in the next sentence of my introduction how this relates to the characters of my novels, A Clockwork Orange and Pulp Fiction. And finally, as you know, comes the thesis statement in my introductory paragraph. Now we have a nice body, an introduction, it's time to write the conclusion. Never an easy task. The first statement of the conclusion is going to have to be somewhat summative, summarizing everything that we've talked about before. Criminals are both inherently evil and inclined to change. This is an important notion. We may need one more argument to back all of this up. Random events made criminals see the value of living good lives. Again, it summarizes, but it also explains. The final point should be very strong. To conclude, we can give it a little twist. We must provide criminals with opportunities to see good. And again, in the concluding paragraph, we could refer to Bernard Madoff or something like that to tie the whole essay together and make it one wholesome meal. Mm -hmm.